What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. Minister Farrakhan has been a uh, icon in black America for, you know, I would say over 50 or 60 years. Uh, he's a very intelligent man. He's a very brilliant man. I have a lot of personal respect for the minister and for the nation of Islam. However, just because he is the minister does not mean he is without fault or he is uh, above being criticized. And I want to take that opportunity to, to do that today in today's video. Um, now, the minister eloquently has responded to the allegations that um, have come up against Kyrie Irving being anti-Semitic. And he made, um, you know, I saw a beautiful clip that he did. And I want to play that. I believe that the minister makes um, a lot of great points. Uh, but I want to come back and push back on a few of those things. And and, uh, and we'll, we'll play it right now. We'll come back. I'd like to start with Brother Kyrie. What did he do wrong? What did he do? He's searching for the knowledge of himself. He's searching to know who he is, who he belongs to. What is his root in this world? And some of you that are persecuting him are the very ones that took away from him and from us the knowledge of self. You took our language. You took our culture. You took our history. You took our minds and inserted your mind into our mind for saying something that is anti-Semitic. And he kept telling you, I can't be anti myself. You didn't want to hear that. You know you came from us. You know that you are not the father of humanity. We know our history and we know yours. We don't like what you're doing to Kyrie or to Ye. And when we see how you want to break him, destroy him, to keep him from saying anything that might enlighten our people. Do you know when you mess up his mind like that, he can't play? I saw the man playing ball the other day and he missed ever for saying something that is anti-Semitic. And he kept telling you, I can't be anti myself. You didn't want to hear that. You know you came from us. You know that you are not the father of humanity. We know our history and we know yours. We don't like what you're doing to Kyrie or to Ye. And when we see how you want to break him, destroy him, to keep him from saying anything that might enlighten our people. Do you know when you mess up his mind like that, he can't play? I saw the man playing ball the other day and he missed ever for saying something that is anti-Semitic. And he kept telling you, I can't be anti myself. You didn't want to hear that. You know you came from us. You know that you are not the father of humanity. We know our history and we know yours. We don't like what you're doing to Kyrie or to Ye. And when we see how you want to break him, destroy him, 
to keep him from saying anything that might enlighten our people. Do you know when you mess up his mind like that, he can't play. I saw the man playing ball the other day and he missed every for saying something that is anti-Semitic. And he kept telling you, I can't be anti myself. You didn't want to hear that. You know you came from us. You know that you are not the father of humanity. We know our history and we know yours. We don't like what you're doing to Kyrie or to Ye. And when we see how you want to break him, destroy him, to keep him from saying anything that might enlighten our people, do you know when you mess up his mind like that, he can't play? I saw the man playing ball the other day and he missed every- So guys, you heard what the minister had to say. I'm not here to disagree with any of that. I believe that what the minister is saying is important. But the minister is a part of black leadership because even though he's with the Nation of Islam, the minister is like almost the closest thing to being um, the president of black America, if you will. You know, something like that. Uh, he's respected by Christians, atheists. He gets a lot of funding from the black community, although the nation of Islam typically will not stand up for things outside of their own nation as it is. But they do get finance and they do do a lot of money from black America. The Million Man March. I mean, you don't even have 40, 50,000 people in nation of Islam, but the minister has that much power to bring those people together. And with that being said, why hasn't the minister and other black leaders brought economic opportunities? And yes, I'm putting the blame on black leaders because he is one. Knowing that, because he's an expert in how the untouchable community or European Jews think. Why hasn't he replicated that in black America? You see, what the problem that the minister has is the same issue that Dr. Umar has, which is he's a great pontificator. He's a great preacher. He can pull emotions he's a great debater but the brother can't and has no real history outside of his own nation of islam and personal wealth doing anything for black america i mean we can look at chicago and we can see how chicago has developed black chicago under the watch and i'm not blaming him for everything but he has a focal point as a mansion there the issue is this why are we always on the defense as victims Y'all are trying to stop him from being a, as if we are pathetic, as if we are not humans, as if we cannot be taught our history and then the history can do something. See, if you want him to know who he is, how is that going to help him work with his own black community? Who are his black doctors? Who are his black politicians? Who are his black businessmen? Because, see, the leaders of black America have never created the resources that people can pull from, unlike rabbis that do that. And they don't even really need to do that because they have a business class to do that. We have a business class, but our business class doesn't work together. And the only business class people that serve the issues of folks is the people themselves. In other words, yes, Farrakhan got a business class that supports him. Umar got a business class that supports him but they don't support the community. And these guys who are complaining about how the untouchable class is trying to make these men less than boys, it's your job to make sure that you pull the resources together to make sure that these guys don't become boys. But you don't do that. You make sure that your personal finances are okay. You make sure that you're living well. But as far as what you do for black America, you fail. Then some of y'all have the audacity to try to say you're not a leader or you're stepping away from leadership and all that's crap. See, the thing is this, a documentary is not going to wake anybody up. I push back on that. If you want to wake him up to who he is, who is he if he don't know how to do business? Who is he if he don't know how to respect his people? Who is he if he don't know how to build in his community? Who is he if he don't know how to real estate invest? Who is he if he don't know how to do stuff? Who is he if he don't know how to work with his brothers? You can't change that off a documentary. Because some of these brothers is going to do that and still be dealing with white women. 
we have not added any value to these black men, to these black women. As to why, all we have done is pontificate in pulpits and sermons. We have not done the work. Let's bring our business community together. Let's bring in tutoring. You even have rappers like Nipsey Hussle who are bringing in those resources. And these guys never did it. I never heard of Farrakhan doing that. I know Farrakhan got a school that you can pay to him to do that. But the things you even see rappers doing, you don't see pastors doing, or the nation doing, or Dr. Umar doing. You don't see them doing that, but you always hear sermons and good points. Is a sermon to rally the people up, brother, or what is it for? Where are the tangible actions? Because think of the Millionaire Man March. Black folks gave all their money to that. What happened with the money? Both times. You didn't see any developer for, for that. Black men came in a tone that made you feel good. You went back home to your community. And then what? You forgot what you're supposed to do because it wasn't repetitive. It was a stunt to make money. And of course, if you really want to believe that you're going to have a march on Washington in the nation's capital, you only can do that because they allow you to do it. And they didn't make money off of you too. So are we in the same bed with the enemy? With some of our leaders, maybe? I'm not I'm just, I'm pushing back on some of this. Y'all might not like it, but it's true. How come the leaders of black America keep us in the same positions that the white folks keep us in year after year after year? And all they got for you is a speech. It doesn't make any sense. This is why black men are pulled away from many sectors of the pro-black thought, including black Christians. Because what is the answer to what they're doing? You know how they think. You know their worst practices and best practices. The problem is you're not implementing it in the race because everything got to be for your organization. If it's the 5%, your leader got to be rich. If it's the black church, his leader got to be rich. If it's Dr. Umar, if it's, Dr. Is, is, is Mr. Farrakhan, it, see, and nothing's getting done. You can say all that all you want, but there are people going to be unified after Farrakhan's speech. And don't pay no attention to him. You brothers and sisters can get woke all you want. You think that white folks are scared of that? Are Jews? If that's what you're saying, they because they know that after that, you don't have the culture and the resources built there and the infrastructure to take advantage of any of that you're talking about. All you're going to do is feel good about yourself, but you're not going to work with your brothers and sisters. You know, you don't have any business set up. You don't know how to get into the business. So you're still going to be powerless to them. And we don't bring those things up because it's hard work. And pastors, preachers want to get you riled up to get your money or to make a sound bite. And I'm tired of being preached to in black America. I'm tired of the pontificators. Shut up. You have no actual solution to anything. You can explain exactly what's going on. But our people have to go out here and actually do the work. We have to go out here and show black men why it's beneficial for you to say hello to your brother and then do business and try to improve our business, try to win our community. One by one by one, add value one by one by one. If we have restaurants, why should you shop here? Because we're good. And then reinvest into those communities and create our own resources. We're not being taught that by our leaders because they don't do it. They only do it for their own personal wealth. That's our problem. And if, and if leaders are not going to come out there and get in the mud with the black community, when it comes to those things, we need to really question that. That's why Jerry Rawlins, the former president of Ghana, he didn't just tell you to clean up Ghana. He got out there and dug the ditch with you. And you don't see that. You see these iconic figures who everybody's afraid to criticize and they are exalted and their track record doesn't really speak to much development outside of what are they talking about in their niche. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again. Another episode of The Celebrity Drunk. Appreciate you for all that you do. Subscribe at the bell. I'm out.